Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray together. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into the dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the Church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided the time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and then restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. Now today, with the whole church. We enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, calling to mind and heart our sinful nature. We begin again our journey through these 40 days of Lent, through the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection, and to make a right beginning of repentance that is a mark of our mortal nature. We bow before the Lord, our Maker and our Redeemer. We confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbor. We say together, Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. All our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the hypocrisy, and the impatience of our lives, we confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Lord our anger and our own frustration and our envy of those more prosperous than ourselves, we confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty of daily life and work, we confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, 
and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Almighty God, you created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Remember, Ed, you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Please come. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints into the joy of his resurrection. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent, creating us new and contrite hearts, that we truly and worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, 
that have eternal life. And St. John says, if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for all our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Be assured, my brothers and sisters, that Almighty God has mercy on us, forgives us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthens us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps us in eternal life. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Return to the Lord your God. Return to the Lord your God. Who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to the temple during the great festival of booths. His teaching at that time caused a sensation among the people, an outrage among the high priest and his circle. At the end of a certain day, Jesus retreated to the Mount of Olives. Early the following morning, he came again to the temple. All the people thronged him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you have to say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground the sins of each of them. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And then Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go your way, and from now on, don't sin again. It's the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, in the name of our one, true, holy, and living Lord, everybody say, Amen, and please be seated. <clears throat> Just when we think we have it all figured out. We know what's right, we know what's wrong. And certainly the uh, Pharisees and the others, religious folks, every one of them, coming to Jesus were probably absolutely certain that this woman deserved stoning. She deserved death. After all, 
that says this, does it not? Of the law of Moses. And look what they're faced with. Jesus, Rabbi, who is known as someone who is at least a prophet, if not something more than that. In fact, maybe the Messiah forgives this woman entirely. The people accusing her are forced to leave one by one in shame because who is without sin? They leave one by one in shame until there's nobody left. But Jesus and that woman actually caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus says to her, well, where were your accusers? She says, nobody's here. And he says, then go home. And don't sin anymore. As I said, we think we have it figured out. And then Jesus throws all our certainty into chaos. Absolute chaos. These self-righteous people who think they've got it all figured out says right in the law of Moses, do not commit adultery. And if you do, there's this penalty. We will stone you in self-righteousness to death. And then Jesus comes along, the Son of God, and shows the deepest kind of mercy. He doesn't ask this woman to kneel before him and grovel on the ground, confess her sin, and say she's sorry. Nothing like that. He just says, there's nobody here to accuse you, and I don't accuse you, so go home. And for heaven's sakes, pay attention. Sin gets you in trouble. Sin makes you miserable. So don't do it anymore. Think of authority figures in our lives. Parents, teachers, policemen. We're so used to having a crushing responsibility when we mess up, when we sin, when we do bad things. But here is God, the Son of God, saying to a woman who has certainly transgressed, just don't do it anymore. Don't do it anymore. Go home and don't do it anymore. Isn't that the essence of forgiveness? Isn't that the essence of mercy? And as God is merciful to us sinful creatures who are nothing more than dust, as he is merciful to us, so we need to be merciful to one another. And in so doing, we come become more than dust. We become, yes, the living image of God ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Return to the Lord your God. Return to the Lord your God.
join the heavenly hosts in the mercy of God at his table. Giving thanks that we are much more than mere dust in God's eyes, even though that's what we deserve. He is for us. He loves us to death. And he sits down at the table with us and enjoys our company just as we enjoy our mother's company in his presence. We have bread and we have wine. Let's stand and celebrate. Let us love one another that we may celebrate this holy mystery in peace. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. For the life of the world. For the life of the world. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the recalling. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this blood cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send now your Holy Spirit. Bless these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Bless us that we may radiate him in all think and say and do. Join our prayers with those of St. Mark and all your holy servants of every time and place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he returns as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for us.
solo Christ sanctify you. Jesus, my Savior, what do you mean? Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. We say together, merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew in us the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As the Father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. For you know well how we are formed. You remember that we are but dust. A reading from Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you're punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. So endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent doesn't discipline? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now, let us go forth and bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.